Good morning, uh, and welcome to the meeting of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. I'm Councilmember Francisco Moya, the chairperson of this subcommittee. And today we are joined by Council Members uh, Gridencheck and Richards. Uh, if you are here to testify, please fill out a speaker slip with the Sergeant at Arms indicating your full name, the application name, or LU number, and whether you are in favor or against the proposal. Uh, today we are holding a hearing on LU 507, an application by Sabor Latino uh, for a renewal application request for a four-year term approval for the continued operation of an unenclosed sidewalk cafe located at 95-35 40th Road in Queens, which includes 18 tables, gentlemen, 18 tables and 36 chairs, and is located in my district. Uh, I want to uh, now open the public hearing on this application, but I'd like to also enter into record that we have received a letter from the applicant that is outlining certain uh, commitments related to the operation of the cafe in response to community concerns, uh, and we will be uh, moving forward with the vote a little later. Uh, I now will call the first panel. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Are there uh, any other members of the public who wish to testify uh, on this item? Uh, seeing none, uh, I now close this hearing uh, on this application. We will now hear the pre-considered LU item for the 3513 Atlantic Avenue rezoning in Council Member Espinal's district in Brooklyn. The applicant seeks a zoning uh, map amendment to establish a C24 commercial overlay district within an existing uh, R5 district along the northern of Atlantic Avenue between Nichols and Grant Avenues. The proposal would facilitate the construction of a new one-story building with local retail use at 3513 Atlantic Avenue. Uh, I now open the public hearing on this application, and I would like to call up Frank St. Jacques. Uh, Council, uh, please swear in the panel. Please state your name uh, as part of your response. Do you swear or affirm that uh, you will <clears throat> that you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and you will answer all questions truthfully. Good morning, Frank St. Jacques, I do. Thank you. You may begin. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Chair Moya uh, and committee members. Uh, again, my name is Frank St. Jacques of Ackerman LLP for the applicant. Excuse me one moment. That's it. Uh, the applicant is Lee Milt Petroleum Incorporated, the owner of 3513 Atlantic Avenue. This application is for a zoning map amendment to add a C24 commercial overlay in an existing R5 district on the north side of Atlantic Avenue between Nichols Avenue and Grant Avenue, which would allow the redevelopment of the site with a new one-story commercial building. The rezoning area outlined in red in the slide consists of three tax lots with a combined area of approximately 24,000 square feet. 3513 Atlantic Avenue is shaded in red. The area was zoned R5 in 1961. The rezoning area is one block east of the boundary of the 2016 East New York rezoning that established mid-density residential, commercial, and mixed-use districts along Atlantic Avenue, including C24 overlays within existing R5 and newly mapped R7A zoning districts on Atlantic Avenue from Euclid Avenue to Lincoln Avenue. The surrounding area is characterized by a mix of low and mid-density residential uses, and commercial uses are concentrated along Atlantic Avenue and Fulton Street, one block to the north. The development site is an 18,760 square foot corner and interior lot. It is improved with two abutting one-story buildings occupied by a gas station with a car wash and a convenience store. The gas station use was permitted in the R5 district by a pre-1961 Board of Standards and Appeals variance that was initially granted in 1955. The existing structures are not suitable for conversion to another commercial use without significant structural alterations. The adjacent site 
that's also included in the, the proposed rezoning, 3485 Atlantic Avenue, has improved with, Uh, a small one-story building occupied by a non-conforming auto sales business with an open sales lot. It was permitted in the R5 residential district, also by BSA variants initially granted in 1959. There's a small tax lot, lot 107, that's uh, 625 square feet. It's a vacant, unimproved interior lot that has no street frontage that is also included uh, in the proposed rezoning just to make a clean uh, zoning district boundary. 3485 Atlantic Avenue, the auto sales lot, was included in the rezoning area because it has the same constraint as the development site. It can continue to operate as a non-conforming auto sales lot in the R5 district, but cannot be redeveloped to anything other than residential use without a zoning change or new BSA approval. The requested rezoning is to map a C24 overlay in the existing R5 zoning district. As I mentioned, this is necessary to permit the development of new commercial use within the rezoning area because the zoning resolution prohibits structural alterations to a building occupied by a non-conforming use. The existing gas station and car wash buildings cannot be converted to another commercial use without the rezoning because significant structural alterations would be required to accommodate such a new use. I'd note that the request uh, for the rezoning for the C24 overlay does not change the underlying R5 zoning district. Subject to the rezoning, the applicant intends to redevelop the site with a new one-story commercial building for lease. The building would have approximately 98,000, excuse me, 9,800 square feet of commercial floor area. That's about a 0.53 FAR and six unenclosed parking spaces. Uh, the one-story building would rise to a height of 19 feet, and there's an illustrative rendering on this slide. Um, we received, uh, we, we had met with the community district, community district five, several times. They uh, unfortunately didn't have a quorum, uh, but it indicated um, that they would have uh, recommended approval of this application. The Brooklyn Borough President also recommended approval, as has the City Planning Commission. So I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, just a, a few questions. Uh, how long has uh, the current uh, gas station auto body uh, establishment been in place? The, um, it's, it's now closed. Um, my understanding... Actually, don't have the, the information with respect to the the former gas station tenant. Um, I can provide that uh, to the council. And did the owner consider any alternatives uh, for redevelopment of this property, such as housing? They had not. Um, this is uh, Lee Mills Petroleum. Um, the owner of the site is a subsidiary of uh, Getty Realty Corp. Um, they're a real estate uh, investment trust. Uh, so they're they're. A plan for the site had been to redevelop it with a new commercial use uh, all along. They hadn't considered residential for this site. And, and is the what type of uh, of retail uh, will you be seeking for the location? So, subject to the rezoning and and other variables, there is a lease with a national auto parts retailer. Um, we can see in the uh, the rendering that's that's the, the use that's uh, that's we, we've shown illustratively, but um, based on the nature of the existing uses along this portion of Atlantic Avenue, it's um, there are a number of auto related uses. So we, we believe that the or the applicant believes that this um, auto parts retailer would be a good fit. Okay, and is the property owner on the other side of the rezoning area? Uh, aware of this application, and they are, are they supportive? So we, um, we haven't done any direct outreach to, uh, to the adjacent owner. Um, I will note that um, we, we haven't received any uh, uh, concerns or complaints from the community board uh, or the local council member who, who we've also met with. Um, the, just to be clear that that site 
um, although it's within the rezoning area, can continue um, unaffected uh, as a non-conforming use subject to the, the prior BSA variance and the rules regarding non-conforming uses. So they can continue to maintain the status quo at their site, but would benefit from the rezoning if they chose to redevelop, or they could also uh, develop as of right under the R5. Okay. And does the applicant intend to retain Brooklyn-based and MWB contractors for the construction? So the applicant hasn't made a specific commitment there, um, at, both to the community board and the borough president. Uh, the applicant's indicated a willingness to do so and to continue to be uh, in touch with the community board and the borough president. The site will ultimately be uh, constructed, built out uh, by the commercial tenant. Um, so the applicant owner of the site um, will maintain contact with the community board and the borough president, local council member, um, to facilitate that conversation. Okay. And last question, will the applicant uh, look to follow the borough president's recommendations regarding uh, street safety and uh, sustainability? Um, so I'll note that the, the, the site as it currently exists um, is, it's essentially a, um, there's, there's really no sidewalk, there's no pedestrian condition. Um, it's, it's essentially one large curb cut where vehicles can come in and out. Um, the proposed site plan would actually create a sidewalk, increasing pedestrian safety. There would only be two 12-foot wide curb cuts. So as planned, there'll be a, a large increase in pedestrian safety, um, but the applicant will also consider implementing uh, further measures as necessary based on the borough president's recommendations and any input from the local council member or the community board. Great. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your testimony today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any other members of the public who wish to testify? Uh, seeing none, I now close the public hearing on this ap application. Uh, and now we will move uh, to our votes. Today we will vote to approve LU 507, the Sabor Latino Cafe, uh, heard today by the subcommittee. Uh, I am in support of this application for a uh, sidewalk cafe renewal, uh, but I'd also like to acknowledge that we've been joined by Council Members Lansman and Council Member uh, Rivera. Uh, I now call for a vote to approve LU 507. Uh, Council, please call the roll. Chair Moya. Aye. Council Member Richards. Aye. Council Member Lansman. Aye. Council Member Grudenchik. Aye. Council Member Rivera. Aye. The vote will remain open. Thank you. Uh, we will now uh, move to hear LU numbers uh, 508 and 509 for the Kew Gardens Hills uh, rezoning related to property in Council Member Lansman's district uh, in Queens. This is a rezoning application by uh, Queens uh, Community Board 8 uh, seeking approval for a zoning map amendment to rezone portions of the existing R2 district to uh, R2 X district as well as a related zoning text amendment to allow such districts to be mapped in Queens Community District 8. There is no specific development associated with this rezoning. The proposal would establish contextual bulk regulations in order to maintain the existing built character of the rezoning area. And I now open the public hearing on this application and I'd like to turn it over to Council Member Lansman for some remarks. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and thank you to the members of the committee who are here this morning to um, hear testimony on this proposal. I'm very pleased that the Kew Gardens Hills rezoning proposal is being heard today. I'm proud to shepherd this rezoning through the council and stand in support of the application made by Queens Community Board 8 and endorsed by the Kew Gardens Hills Civic Association to rezone Kew Gardens Hills, portions of it, <clears throat> from an R2 district to an R2X district. These redistricting will increase the floor area ratio, impacting about 400 homes in my district. This rezoning will give property owners the flexibility to expand their homes about 10 feet into their backyards and three feet on each side, allowing them to develop larger single family homes to accommodate their growing families. This change is necessary for this growing community. 
The high cost of living in New York City continues to push families to Long Island, upstate, and New Jersey in search of, a more, of more space at a lower cost. By approving this rezoning, New York City will provide a better incentive to native New Yorkers to remain in our city. I want to again thank the chairman and all the members of the committee, a subcommittee on zoning and franchises for conducting this hearing. Thank you. Thank you, um, Councilmember Lansman. Uh, I now uh, would like to call up the next panel, which is uh, Jay Goldstein, uh, Adam Sokol, and uh, Jacob uh, Shaffage. Council, if you can please swear in the panel. Please state your name uh, as part of your response. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you are about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, and that you will answer all questions truthfully? Jay Goldstein, I do. Adam Sokol, I do. Please make sure the speaker light is turned on. Uh, now we know how to work it. Adam Sokol, I do. Jacob Schaffer, and I do. Thank you. You may begin. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much for having us today. My name is Jay Goldstein. I thank the council members, especially Council Lansman, for, uh, for being here today. As Council Member Lansman did uh, mention, this is a community-driven um, application. I hear, I'm here today representing, in an interesting role, the community board, Community Board 8 in Queens, as well as uh, constituents within the neighborhood. With me is Adam Sokol and Jacob Schaffrin, two residents of the neighborhood who really spearheaded this grassroots movement which is a unique rezoning in the, in, in the uh, city, spearheaded and, and really pushed forward by a group of community residents to preserve their community. The, community the, the rezoning application before you encompasses two areas, Project Area A and Project Area B. Project Area A and Project Area B combined have a total of about 378 lots. Project Area A is generally bounded by 72nd Avenue, Main Street, 77th Avenue, and Park Drive East and encompasses 283 tax lots on 10 tax blocks. Project Area B is generally bounded by Union Turnpike, Park Drive East, 78th Avenue, and Vlai Place, encompasses 94 tax lots on six tax blocks. The project area is well serviced by mass transit. People uh, can take the express bus to the city walk to the F train or the E train and take buses throughout the uh, Queens area within a very easy walking, area, uh, walking distance. The proposal seeks to change the R2 to an R2X district. The proposal will keep the single family nature of the neighborhood, will not allow for mass development, and will allow the property owners and the homeowners to enlarge their, um, enlarge their lots to accommodate their larger families and their existing families. As mentioned, the FAR will go up from 0.5 to 0.85 with a 1.02 attic allowance. It'll decrease the rear yard from 30 to 20 feet. And uh, as a benefit, it'll limit the heights on the houses to 35 feet as opposed to the sky exposure plane, which currently exists. Um, here's a graph showing the difference between the existing zoning and the, the proposed zoning. Um, as mentioned, not much will change in terms of the density. It's a one family, single family home area. Here's a pre-1961 uh, house which has not yet been enlarged. Here's a picture of the home which has been enlarged under the current zoning. This home is uh, indicative of the houses which are going up. However, they are shorter homes which don't allow for larger kitchens and more bedrooms which is necessary. Here's an additional picture of a pre-61 home with another home that was recently enlarged under the current zoning. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Just two quick questions before I turn it over to uh, Council Member Lansman. Can you just go back uh, and just provide some additional detail regarding the height and yard requirements in an R2X district? Sure. And how it differs from the R2RA district? Sure. So the R2, the, the major difference that you'll see would, that you'll see in, in practicality is going to be at the rear yard. The rear yard right now is required at 30 feet. This will allow a 20-foot rear yard. Um, that's really the impetus for this. So we had a town hall meeting with uh, city planning where they explained that the current R2, if you play with certain uh, deductions, have a driveway in your first floor, you can really achieve a 1FAR home as well. 
However, it's a taller home as opposed to a larger home. In this neighborhood, really the impetus for pushing this forward was to have larger dining rooms, larger kitchens on the first floor, and more bedrooms on a second floor, which this rezoning will allow. The front yard stays the same. The side yards, currently it's required two at 13 feet, one at five, one at eight mm -hmm. as your minimum. The proposal will be 10 feet, one at two and one at eight. However, given the existing homes, we don't see many reapportionments, so it's gonna be hard to really accommodate that since you're gonna be required to keep a minimum of eight feet between the homes anyways. So again, the major difference in this is going to be at the rear of the home. In terms of the height, current height allows for a 25 foot front wall and then setback with sky exposure so you can have very tall houses. The, current, the proposal under the R2X would have a 21 foot front wall and the max of the house would be at 35 feet. So it does cap you at a, essentially a three story home as opposed to now where you can have a taller house. Got it. Um, and what type of expansions are most common or anticipated, uh, bless you, in an R2X district? We really anticipate it being at the rear of the home. While some of the homes such as this will obviously go under um, larger, you know, more extensive uh, enlargements in all directions, this house, if they do seek to enlarge it, will only be at the rear. This house, again, a larger development, but this home will, again, only be at the rear if they do seek to expand it. And just last question, uh, what other areas in the city are mapped R2X? So there's, within Far Rockaway, there's a, the area of Far Rockaway by Beach 9th area, there's an R2X um, district. And also in uh, areas of Brooklyn, there's an R2X district. Both of those areas have sim de similar demographics. We're, we're meant to do similar things as our proposal is today. They've seemingly worked out very well. The city was happy with them, and that's how we geared in and modeled our rezoning request. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, now I now want to turn it over to <coughs> Councilmember Lansman for some questions. Thank you. Um, if the residents of Kew Gardens Hills could just tell us why this is important for you and, and for the community. As I think has been said, uh, this is not uh, an application that is driven by city planning or something that I thought up of, thought of. This is something that really came from the community. So putting aside the height and FAR ratios and all the other technical talk, can you just tell the, the subcommittee why this is important for, for the people who live in this area and, and what it means to this community to get this done? All right, hi, I'm Adam Sokol. So when I embarked on this program, I had built my home already. Let's talk a little close, put the <clears throat> mic on. Apologize for my, uh, my cold, Councilman Lansman. Um, so um, when I embarked on this project, I, I did it merely as uh, out, of, out of a lot of frustration um, on, on two separate sets. On the first one, um, friends were moving out of the neighborhood um, because they were getting a lot more value in other neighborhoods and being able to build houses big enough that can, um, you know, be a suffice for their family. And second of all, out of, I, I built my home already, but went through four or five years with the city trying to get what I need. And at the end of doing that, I did and um, have a CEO, but um, it was just, it was a long, long tail. And I just wanted to try to do something good for the neighborhood to make it easier on others to to stay. Um, and this is definitely a necessity. And the plan of the R2X is, is something that works very well. And, and we basically had like a majority of, of the neighborhood all, all, um, all in favor for it. So it's something that we're looking forward to. And we could keep uh, people around like Mr. Shaffron in the neighborhood that was going to run away to Long Island. But we're going to uh, try to keep him here. Thank you, Jacob Shaffron. Um, so my mother grew up in the neighborhood. Um, I grew up in the neighborhood. I currently purchased a house in the neighborhood. I haven't done anything with the home in anticipation of you know the R2X coming through. Since I have four young kids, um, space is always something that we need in terms of the house, bedrooms, we have a large family, relatives abroad who like to come in for holidays and so on. Um, it's a challage, I guess. To, to want to have a large home, and, the, and this 
will give us the ability to do that. I know the 10 feet makes a big difference. The side, the side yards as well make a big difference in order to get us a, a bigger box and the FER we need. That's uh, something that you know we had reached out to Jay early on. We had the support of everyone, and we're very appreciative we got to this point, and we thank everyone for their time. That's all I have. Thank you very much for your testimony today. Uh, I'd like to call up uh, the next uh, panelist, which is uh, Sheena uh, Kang. Just make sure that the button is turned on. Yep. Got it. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Chair Moya and members of the subcommittee. My name is Sheena Kong, and I am a policy analyst at the Citizens Housing and Planning Council. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to speak today about the Kew Gardens Hills rezoning. Uh, CHPC is a nonprofit research organization that has helped to shape public policy in New York since 1937. We are committed to the advancement of policies that enable the city's housing stock to better meet the diverse and changing needs of its population. Um, we commend the Kew Gardens Hills community for seeking the land use changes before us today, which will better allow the local housing stock to meet the needs of growing resident families. Yet the details of the proposed actions also must be carefully considered. Cities across the U.S. are banning single-family zoning to try to combat shortage of housing supply, which is an issue that is all too familiar here in New York. Um, and in this context, zoning changes to a single-family area that would not allow for additional density uh, should be thoroughly evaluated to ensure that their outcomes are optimal. Uh, CHPC is eager to see that the changes sought would reduce the minimum rear yard depth from 30 to 20 feet, an allowance that is unique to R2X districts. This would allow for additional FAR with minimal impacts to neighborhood character or resident exposure to light and air. We commend the applicants, um, city planning, and everyone involved in this for pursuing this particular change. And we would also be enthusiastic to see the city explore options for incorporating this allowance into other low density residential zoning districts. While recognizing the desire to maintain built character, we would also urge the consideration of two family zoning or single family zoning with the allowance for accessory dwelling units. Families in Kew Gardens Hills today are growing, and as a result, they're encountering the need for larger homes. And in the future, many of these same residents may wish to age in place. A secondary unit could allow for a caretaker to live on site or provide a fixed income homeowner with supplemental income through rent. And these are needs that CHPC has frequently encountered through our work on basement apartment conversions, and which are well worth anticipating ahead of time. In sum, housing needs in New York City are constantly fluctuating, and it is critical to maintain flexibility in the housing stock so that it can react to our most pressing needs. We're happy to answer any questions you may have about these suggestions and appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony today. Got it. Uh, are there, are there any other uh, members of the public who wish to testify? Uh, seeing none, I now close a public hearing on this application. Uh, we're going to pause uh, for a minute uh, to keep the vote open.
Council Member Levin, um, I now ask Council to continue uh, our vote for today. On the continuing vote, on the continuing vote of the land use items, Council Member Levin. Aye on all. I vote of six in the affirmative, zero in opposition, and no abstentions. The items are the item is approved uh, and referred to the full land use committee. <laughs> we just closed it. We can. We have been joined by Council Member Reynoso. Uh, on a continuing vote of the land use items, Council Member Reynoso. Thank you so much. I vote aye. <laughs> no problem. Uh, by a vote of seven in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, the item is approved and referred to the full land use committee. Thank you. Uh, and this concludes today's meeting. Uh, I'd like to take a point of privilege to uh, acknowledge that. Uh, this is John White's last uh, uh, hearing today. He is moving on to bigger and better things, and I couldn't be more grateful and thankful for uh, his work and service. I know that he's made me a better chair, uh, and I just want to wish him uh, all the best in his future endeavors. Uh, he has been a tremendous help and support uh, to me uh, and my staff. So John White, thank you so much for your service. We wish you all the best uh, and Godspeed. Uh, I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, council, and land use staff for attending. Uh, this meeting is hereby adjourned.